Henry IV Part II is a history play written by William Shakespeare around 1599. It is the third play in a tetralogy, preceded by Richard II and Henry IV Part I, and followed by Henry V. Picking up where Part I leaves off, the play follows two storylines that eventually intersect. Falstaff's buffoonish attempts to insinuate himself with Prince Hal and the battle for England's throne. The play opened shortly after the Battle of Shrewsbury, in which King Henry IV emerged victorious over the rebel forces. The Earl of Northumberland learns that his firstborn son, Hotspur, was defeated by the tavern-going Prince Harry, or Hal, in combat. Northumberland decides to send letters to powerful men in every corner of Britain who disapprove of the king, hoping for their support in staging another rebellion. Meanwhile, Falstaff, Hal's loud-mouthed drinking companion, basks in his new reputation as a great warrior, having stolen the credit for killing Hotspur from Hal. For his part, Prince Hal has decided to reform his low-life ways and become a respectable leader. To that end, Hal tasks the obese and aging Falstaff with traveling across the land to enlist soldiers for the king's army. Before he does so, however, Falstaff uses his new reputation to evade arrest by the Lord Chief Justice for his various crimes and debts. Falstaff also evades his debt to Mistress Quickly, owner of the Boar's Head Tavern, and actually convinces her to lend him more money. Hal and his tavern friend Poins learn of Falstaff's plan to dine with the mistress that evening and concoct a plot to disguise themselves as waiters in order to spy on their deceitful friend. At the same time, the Archbishop of York, Lord Malbray, Lord Bardolph, and Lord Hastings prepare to go to war against King Henry. But they soon question whether they can count on Northumberland's support. Swayed by his grief-stricken wife, Northumberland ultimately opts to deny the rebels his aid once again. Northumberland hides out in Scotland while the rebel forces gather at the Forest of Galtry. At the Boar's Head Tavern, Falstaff dines with Mistress Quickly and several tavern companions, including his favorite courtesan, Doll Tearsheet. Disguised as waiters, Hal and Poins eavesdrop on Falstaff who tells Dahl Tearsheet that Poins and the Prince are weak-minded. When Hal and Poins reveal themselves, Falstaff protests, claiming that he only condemned the Prince to ensure that the scoundrels in his company would stay away from the monarch. The shameless Falstaff then continues his mission to enlist soldiers, passing through Gloucestershire. There, he encounters an old friend, Justice Shallow, who has prospered greatly since Falstaff last saw him. Jealous, Falstaff decides to swindle Shallow on his way back from the battle. In the meantime, Falstaff accepts bribes from two of the five peasants, Moldy, Bullcalf, Feeble, Shadow, and Wart, whom Shallow puts forward as soldiers for the war. At Galtry Forest, the king's second son, Prince John, parlays with the rebels, Malbray, Hastings, and the archbishop. Prince John agrees to the rebels' terms on the condition that they disband their army. But just as they do, Prince John goes back on his word, arresting the three commanders and sentencing them to death. Falstaff arrives soon after, and Prince John chastises him for being late. Falstaff trades a rebel knight he captured on the way there for Prince John's permission to return to Gloucestershire, which the prince grants. Meanwhile, the aging King Henry has fallen ill as a result of his concern over the rebellion. When his trusted advisor, the Earl of Westmoreland, informs the king that Prince John has defeated the rebels, Henry is so relieved that he faints. Entering the throne room, 
Hal assumes his father has died and leaves with the crown. King Henry soon awakes and scolds Hal, who nevertheless reassures his father that he will live up to his duties as king. After imparting his last advice to Prince Hal, the king asks to be taken to a chamber where he dies. Falstaff returns to Gloucestershire, where he observes Shallow in the hopes of mining a few jokes to use on Prince Hal. In the midst of doing so, Falstaff, along with Shallow, learn of King Henry's death. Knowing this means that Prince Hal is now king, Falstaff and his companions decide to travel to London, where Falstaff expects to be rewarded with an even more high-ranking position. In London, Falstaff and his companions kneel before King Hal, expecting great things. But the king treats them coldly, telling Falstaff that he has cast off his old hooligan ways, forgetting his former friends. Moreover, the king shocks Falstaff by forbidding him from coming within ten miles of his person. In denial, Falstaff waits for Hal to summon him privately while the oblivious King Hal initiates plans to invade France. <laughs>